What's up guys, Mikkel here. And over the past couple days, I spent a long time going over how many of the largest institutions in the entire world are now saying they are ready to adopt cryptocurrency technology. They are ready to start using it in their payment flows and they are ready to start investing into these networks. Well, in this video, I wanna show you exactly why XRP is going to be the clear and obvious choice for most of these institutions. A lot of people totally overthink how they select which cryptocurrency they're going to invest in. In this video, I want to make it super simple for you and show you why XRP is such a clear front runner in this market, as well as towards the end of the video, show you an extremely bullish development for cryptocurrency regulation in the United States that's flying super under the radar right now. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see that you are not going to want to miss it. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you use the link in the description of this video to sign up with Uphold and trade at least $1 worth of XRP, you'll be entered into a contest to win 10,000 XRP. Do not miss out on that. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, like I said in the intro of this video, I want to go over exactly why XRP is going to be such an obvious choice for most of these large institutions when it comes down to their cryptocurrency ambitions. For a while, there was a lot of skepticism of whether or not these big institutions were ever going to get involved in the cryptocurrency market. A lot of people thought these big banks, big institutions, big investment firms were anti-crypto. But what I have been showing on this channel over the past couple weeks is the largest institutions in the entire world need this technology. At the end of the day, cryptocurrencies are a game-changing upgrade to our financial system, and big financial institutions need to stay competitive, and therefore they need to adopt this technology. They're also saying they're ready to invest in the networks. I have showed the clip of Larry Fink of BlackRock multiple times on this channel, where he directly says that cryptocurrencies are going to be a flight to safety. So there's no doubt that the big institutions are interested in cryptocurrency technology and investing in the underlying assets. But I want to show you exactly why XRP is going to be such an obvious choice. So if we take a look at the top 10 cryptocurrencies right now, I just want to quickly go through exactly why XRP is such an obvious choice out of all of them. It's important to understand there are a lot of other great smaller cryptocurrencies out there, but the cryptocurrency market is still so niche and so small, these big institutions need big liquidity. They are not going to be looking at micro cap cryptocurrencies this market is already risky enough for them they're going to go for the blue chip the top tier crypto assets especially when they're starting off their journey into this asset class and that is even more true when it comes to these institutions using the underlying technology these institutions cannot utilize a network with a hundred million dollar market cap they will absolutely skyrocket that market cap the second they touch the network so they need to stick to the top tier cryptocurrencies the most liquid ones and the blue chip ones ones. So that's the ones we're going to talk about in this video. So first of all, we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an obvious investment choice for these institutions, but how are they really going to use Bitcoin in any meaningful way for their payment services? They're going to give their customers the ability to invest in Bitcoin, to invest in Bitcoin products. But what we're learning is every single day, institutions are moving away from using Bitcoin as a settlement layer. It's too slow. It's too inefficient. And even earlier today, there was some breaking news about a massive vulnerability in the Lightning Network. Now, the Lightning Network is just a centralized solution, so it, it doesn't surprise me at all that there's a vulnerability there, but it just goes to show that these layer two scaling solutions on top of Bitcoin are no XRP killer. They are centralized in nature. They're breaking down because they're not layer ones because they're not fully decentralized. So it's just so important to understand that right now, Bitcoin really isn't even close to being a viable payment instrument for these institutions. Well, next up is Ethereum, and Ethereum has its own massive issues. It's slow, just like Bitcoin, but it's also extremely expensive. Think about what happens in every single bull market when retail starts using Ethereum. The fees skyrocket. Imagine what would happen if a real institution tried to use Ethereum. It would be almost unusable. There's no way they could use it. It would have such high fees, it would be so bogged down, the network would become so expensive, no one could actually use it for what it's intended to be used for, fast and efficient payments. So right off the bat, we have the number one and two cryptocurrencies maybe being investment products for these institutions, but there's no way they could actually leverage them for utility. So next we have BNB. And think about all the drama we hear with Binance. You really think any institution in the United States is going to touch BNB? Of course not. It's completely centralized. There is so much drama with CZ and Binance all over the world. This is just not a product I don't even think they're going to invest in. They're not going to want to touch this. BNB is a massive liability and there's just absolutely no way 
regulated institutions, institutions with credibility are going to be doing anything with BNB. So let's skip over XRP for now and then go to Solana. Well, obviously Solana has the tech to compete with some of the top tier cryptocurrencies, but it's completely unreliable. It's constantly going down. It has all the drama of FTX around it. And overall, this just doesn't seem like a very reliable network. Now, Solana has continued to impress me with how much institutional adoption it has been able to kind of keep on the chain despite all the issues it's had. But when it comes down to a large institution actually adopting these protocols at a base layer, I just don't understand how any responsible institution can actually say, hey, we're going to build this all on Solana and not expect there to be massive issues. So I do think Solana does have some potential, but they have a lot of credibility to build back up. They have a lot of trust to build back up on the underlying protocol. I still think it has a lot to prove in terms of decentralization. Then we have Cardano. Guys, Cardano, I just don't see any institutional use cases on it. All the projects built on Cardano are all these like ice cream swap projects, all these dumb NFT products that I just don't see institutions engaging in. So I think Cardano could be a very interesting chain from a retail level. I just don't see any institutional adoption. And then Tron, I'm not even going to get into Tron. There's really not anything to say about it. So we just went through the top tier cryptocurrencies, right? And nothing even came close to XRP. XRP is by far the most consistently reliable, fastest, top tier crypto asset out of the bunch. It is actually getting institutional adoption today. We already see banks using XRP and Ripple's ODL related product to make payments faster and more efficient. When the biggest institutions in the entire world go to invest in this asset class, which one are they going to understand the utility of? They're going to understand the utility of the cryptocurrency actually being used for what cryptocurrencies were meant to be used for. They're going to look at, hey, which of these cryptocurrencies can we use to move value? Well, it's not Bitcoin that's too slow. It's not Ethereum. The fees cost half as much as the payment. Wait, why don't we just go to XRP? This is this lightning fast, super efficient asset being used by the trusted institutions. On top of that, it's the only asset in the United States with clarity around it. I hope this really helped show you exactly why the choice is actually so obvious when it comes to these institutions getting involved in the cryptocurrency sector and which assets they're going to be focused on. I think so many people overthink it. They go to like the bottom 200 and find some asset that has unique capabilities. But at the end of the day, these institutions are not going to be focused there. They're going to be focused on the blue chips. They're going to be focused on the cryptocurrencies with actual liquidity because you need to understand these market caps we see today are still so small compared to what's coming. These institutions need to invest in the biggest networks out there because they're the only cryptocurrencies in this asset class that are actually liquid enough for them to touch. I hope that makes it extremely obvious how clear the choice is going to be when these institutions step into the market. And if you've been watching these videos for the last couple of weeks, there should be no question they are coming and coming in a very big way. I want to finish this video off and talk about something going on behind the scenes that is very bullish for cryptocurrency regulation, and that is Tom Emmer actually running for Speaker of the House. Now, the previous Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, didn't care at all about cryptocurrencies. There was essentially no cryptocurrency agenda, but now we have Tom Emmer actually throwing his hat in the ring to try to become Speaker. Now, right now, there's actually a lot of people trying to become Speaker, and it's been a total you-know-what show. But the good news is, is Tom Emmer actually has the backing of McCarthy behind him, but also the backing of a lot of other people because, because he's really seen as a person who's willing to kind of go against the narrative and get stuff done in a very efficient way. So I think he actually has a really good chance of becoming speaker. Now, like I always say, I try not to get into politics on this channel, but if anyone is really going to grill into Gary Gensler and hold Gary Gensler accountable for the mess he has made of this industry, let me tell you, Tom Emmer is 100% one of those people. If Tom Emmer becomes speaker, I think we will see a scenario where cryptocurrencies are put as a priority. This market will be fixed in the United States, and one of his main things he always says in all the congressional hearings is the innovation is going offshore. We need to make sure we keep Keep the innovation here. He specifically said before in interviews that he's a big fan of Ripple and XRP. I don't think there could be a better speaker of the house or XRP holders than Tom Emmer. So this is a very exciting development. We went from someone who had no interest in cryptocurrencies to possibly someone who not only fully understands cryptocurrencies, but is going to hold the SEC accountable and make sure that altcoins like XRP are put on a level playing field to the rest of the sector. 
I'm not sure how it gets much better than this. I really hope he does become Speaker of the House because this could drastically change the environment for cryptocurrencies in the United States in a very positive light. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out. Thank <laughs> you.